as soon as the meter read, it was like, boop. I was like, oh my God, look at that. Like it was um, just, I was at a 5.7, which is yeah. crazy. And you I thought it was really cool that I felt very calm, but energized. But I think that was the thing that really set that apart for me. It was one, that energy with the calmness, but two, just being able to actually be creative and feel like my brain was like expanding almost and not just on this one track, like let's just drive, 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 drive. Right. So I'm a doctor of chiropractic. We run a family practice here in Westlake Village, California, but we're also neurologically based. So the main reason that I would ever use an exogenous ketone would be for the cognitive benefits, the, the benefits that ketones have for your mindset and the way your brain's able to perform. And I do notice a benefit, not nearly, not even the in the same world as what I felt with Ketone Aid. Frank Yosa here, CEO of Ketone Aid. I'm here with Dr. Brady Salcido. Welcome and thank you for trying the Esther. We sent you 40 grams, uh, which is the maximum. Some people have benefit at 10 or 20 grams, but that's the maximum. And then you also did the mental performance protocol, which is just the Esther. With uh, sports performance, you need it with glucose and Esther. And you're saying, real quick, what were your numbers in the first you know, 15 minutes and then 60 minutes? So pre, I was at 0.7. That's typically what I'd wake up at would be like 0.7 to 1.1, depending on, because I'm intermittent fasting. So it depends on what I ate the night before and how strict I am on my ketogenic diet. And then 15 minutes after taking it, I tested at a 2.7, 2.4, 2.7, somewhere around there, which is absurd. For yeah, you were minutes. freaking out on the on the Instagram video. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I showed that to you, huh? Because that was just crazy. I couldn't believe it. Like, as soon as the meter read, it was like, boop. I was like, oh, my God, look at that. <laughs> like, it was just crazy. And then 60 minutes after, um, I was at a 5.7, which is yeah. crazy. And you had uh, some in-the-zone work experience. You went down a list of, like, 20 different things you got through, but then – Let's focus real quick on creativity. You said that that was an unexpected boost, and we hadn't heard that from anybody else. Yeah, so the creativity side was the really cool aspect of that. Kind of like we were talking about pre-show was, you know, I've been trying a lot of different nootropics that are out there right now, and been having good, bad, and interesting responses with all the different ones. And I think the thing that really set this apart for me was just that I noticed such an increase in my creativity. While I was doing all these things that I had to do, you know, graphic designs for, I was able to do them so much faster. And I look back at the designs now, cause maybe it was just one of those things I was just like working through it and you're just like, you got the blinders on and all of a sudden, you know, you get the work done, you look back and you're like, what the heck was I thinking? Like, what, where did that come from? But I look back at it, I'm like, man, these were really good. Like, those were great ideas. Like they actually were moving the needle forward instead of like maybe falling off a little bit. But I think that was the thing that really set that apart for me it was one, that energy with the calmness, but two, just being able to actually be creative and feel like my brain was like expanding almost and not just on this one track, like let's just drive, 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 drive. Right. You know, and, and since your audience is mainly mental, I was saying that they, people might want to go to the Bob Troya podcast and his uh, blog post where he did a one week baseline and on Lumosity and then did 10 games. And his scores were at the, his lowest increase was a 10% increase, but his best increase was a 30% increase. And he said that it blew away any nootropic, you know, that he's ever tried. Now, I see in your name that you're a doctor. Let's go over real quick, you know, what kind of, let's see, what kind of doctor are you? So I'm a doctor of chiropractic. We run a family practice here in Westlake Village, California, but we're also neurologically based. So what we do is we take scans of infrared thermography. We take surface EMG, which measures the autonomic function of the nervous system, um, using the paraspinal muscles of the spine. And then we also use heart rate variability, which is a central part of our practice for understanding the health of the autonomic nervous system. So we see a wide variety of patients. We have a great thriving practice here where we see majority athletes, even kids. We see people with different issues like autoimmune issues, cancer, um, just like a wide variety of issues and they're seeing phenomenal results through what we're doing. So that's where a lot of like the neuro lifestyle stuff comes in because I'm just so fascinated by the brain, the mind and the central nervous system. Did you test, test your HRV when you were taking the ester or before I or after? Didn't. No, I didn't. So I, I definitely should have done That's what I was thinking about after. I was so focused on like my ketone levels that I never actually tested it. But we'll I can get you another one. We'll get you another one. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind. But based on what I found, and because I, I take my heart rate variability pretty regularly, and we have a pretty sophisticated system that uses a combination of um, capillary refill, or so basically like skin temperature, capillary refill, and also galvanic skin response. 
So we're measuring all these together. So it uses, you know, the beats of the heart, skin galvanic response, which is measuring kind of like the emotional responses of the nervous system. So we use this really dynamic system that gives us a much deeper look into the heart rate variability based on the person that day than just say using like your thumb or a heart rate strap, right. which is really cool. So based on using that, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm feeling and where my heart rate variability will plot. So based on that and based on how I felt while I was on the product, I can say pretty confidently that I know my heart rate variability was significantly better than it would right. typically be when yeah, say, we, I was on coffee or anything else. You're talking about HRV. We had uh, Greg Henderson who he, pref he tried it once and the next day, well, his results were he was 10% you know, higher uh, th sustained threshold than he was expecting. And the next day, his HRV was a seven. He was expecting it to be a three because he worked out so hard. Yeah. And it was as if he had taken the day off. Oh, totally. And I think that's a big reason why a lot of these people who are getting into a ketogenic diet are seeing all these different experiences with experimenting with ketosis and ketones and all these different things. Why some of these athletes are seeing so much significant recovery benefits. Right. With it. Like we have some of our clients who we work with, you know, through the neuro lifestyle, through our practice, who we teach them how to use these principles, kind of like we talked about before on how to get your body using ketones more efficiently and to become more of this balanced fat burning machine and sugar burner. And a lot of these athletes know much more significant benefits in the recovery. Thanks to this. Yeah. And have you taken any of the salts and noticed anything, you know, remotely like that? No, not even close. Not even close. I've taken some of them and I always tell people in, you know, the thing that you see out there, especially with ketones and exogenous ketones, is all this weight loss stuff, weight loss benefits. And we won't get into that, but there's like a whole bunch of stuff. There's so many different factors with that that I just can't stand that. So I always tell people the main reason that I would ever use an exogenous ketone would be for the cognitive benefits, the, the benefits that ketones have for your mindset and the way your brain's able to perform. And I do notice a benefit, not nearly, not even in the same world as what I felt with ketonate. Like I def, it's only, it would almost be as if I took like half a cup of coffee is what I would typically feel with it. Like you're not going to feel the radical boost like, whoa, that I do with ketonate. Right. With, uh, so the racemic salts mostly have about five grams of beta hydroxybutyrate and you had 40. So it's basically eight X. And obviously you can't take that much salt because it'd be the equivalent of taking, I don't know, a restaurant shaker of salt loads. So it's just not possible. Um, yeah. I didn't want to let everything out of my pants. So thank you for that. Well, we can end on that note. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys.